Awesome. So today I'm super excited to talk to my good friend, Amanda Olivari. Hi, Amanda. Hey. Hi. So, so Amanda's uh, started her career with Remax River City, correct? And uh, it's been licensed now for two years and right. uh, just had your second anniversary. So congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and so today um, you're going to share some insights on, I guess, uh, we talked a little bit about three uh, pillars or uh, uh, three real specific uh, points of direction for your business um, that you're able to lev leverage relationships uh, with others to grow your business. Exactly. All right, cool. So let's, uh, let's start off with, uh, with the first, um, I guess, uh, piece of advice that you would give and the, the first point of leverage with other people was which? Sure. So for me, I think my number one uh, business, like what's made me actually successful in this business would be the mentorship program that Remax offered, particularly Great. River City. When, when I did all my interviews at the beginning, that was the one main thing that made me join this brokerage. Um, so the mentorship program for me was essential. And I use the mentorship program maybe a little differently than other people did. I um, Kim was really my like number one go-to for explaining processes and how they worked. Um, okay. Not necessarily telling me how to, you know, go out there and meet people. I come from a business background, so I knew how to do that, but I certainly didn't know how to do paperwork and all the crazy things that come with this business that nobody else sees. And so right. she was essential in teaching me how to do those things. Okay, great. And so just quick summary though of what is the, what is the mentorship program? What did you get out of that? Specifically? Yeah, so I think, I mean, the mentorship program for me, it's obviously a timed situation, but I still two years in, I'm still, Kim has become one of my real estate best friends. Um, she's essential to my like almost daily workings in business. I don't think I've written a contract um, that has been the same. So the, they all have a little you know, tiny little thing that's different. And she's always there to help me. Um, and I don't think people realize that that is so crucial in this. So I definitely have used her in terms of friendship, you know, from a business growing into a friendship. And she's like, really honestly been like, probably the number one reason why I've been able to feel successful in what right. I do. Great. So yeah, a great foundation through those, through that relationship. Love that. And um, I love that there's a resource for you as well. Whenever you just want to bounce an idea around, yeah. there's somebody, you've got that buddy system, even though there's not a financial relationship there with that exactly. anymore. So um, yeah. yeah, I love that. And I mean, and we try to create that environment here as well, where we're just collaborative industry leaders, um, but it's, it is nice to have that, uh, um, that go-to person, right? Mm -hmm. good. I love that. So um, I love that you got some real great benefit out of the mentorship program. And that's a good um, a person that you've leveraged and, and, and really took advantage to escalate that learning curve coming out of, uh, out of the licensing program, right? So exactly. yeah, <laughs> it's great. All right. Uh, number two. So number two would be for me would be um, agent to agent business. So I think I really quickly realized like probably the first weekend I joined it was I remember it was a Thursday session that I did at the office, um, one of the training sessions, and somebody just said, you know, you need to go do open houses. If you're not doing open houses, you're not meeting new people. And I reached out to um, Sarah Lieb and she seemed like a very nice person. And, and um, so I reached out to her. She was just like, I mean, so beyond lovely. The first open house I hosted, I remembered I didn't have open house signs. I had nothing. And her husband showed up. He said everything, you know, really, I couldn't get the key box open. Like, that's how new I was. I didn't know how to do anything. Um, and since that day, she has been really like my biggest supporter in terms of, you know, um, whether it's been sending me referrals, helping me for some, you know, maybe something we, I, a little bit odd um, questions that I had. Um, she was always able to help me. She, you know, was really good at acreages and specific um, mobile park, you know, questions. And so I always had her very specifically for that. But she's to this day sends me referrals and leads, and I follow through. I follow through with her. So it's been very good. Okay. And do you have a couple of agents that you do that kind of um, business with? Like you, you help them with certain things, and then in turn 
you get a referral here and there or a sign call maybe they're not going to get to or um, you know those types of leads yeah. um, do you mind talking a little bit about what you do for splits because a lot of the people watching this will be newer to industry agents or thinking about getting licensed and so do you mind sharing what you pay in referral fees specifically? So I think it's been a little bit different with a few. And I and okay. I do think that you can have that conversation of what, you know, they generally bring a percentage. And that has had a conversation has come up a couple of times. Um, I know that I dealt with a few realtors that were a 50% referral. For me, okay. that's a lot of work. Um, and I, and I, it doesn't work for me particularly. Okay. But there's other agents that I think there's a 25 or a 30% percent referral and that has been my average is the 25 to 30 percent that I and I and I look at that as being that was that was a person that was a contact that I didn't have and to pay 25 or 30 percent to somebody for that no Mm. matter what type of work I do hopefully I've built a long enough lifetime relationship with that client that I will get return business from them So it really is essential. But I'd say my number one comment that I always get back from realtors um, is is that I'm consistently making certain that they understand what I'm doing with that lead. So if that lead has died and I've tried everything that I possibly can, I certainly want that realtor to understand what I've done to get to that point. Um, And I try to keep them in the loop throughout the process. You know, we've seen, you know, not, I'm not on a daily because they don't have time to listen to that. They give you a leave for that reason. Um, They kind of want to get it off their plate, but I do like to keep them in the loop. And Sarah has mentioned that a few times that, you know, being able to just kind of not worry about the lead, either not going anywhere or whatever I do, you know, with whether I've had a couple of leads that have taken me 18 months to, you know, honestly, you know, actually get down to a deal. And Sarah's like, I would have totally forgotten about that person. Right. Right. So it's, um, yeah. So keeping in contact with those agents, making sure you're, you know, being thankful and appreciative. Um, I think that goes a long way as well. Great. So a couple of things I heard just to sum up is be clear on expectations. So when you are taking on leads, what is the expectation for your follow-up? and being transparent with where, what stage you're at with each of those leads. Um, That builds confidence for me, especially as someone who does refer business out, knowing that they're getting taken care of, or that at least there's attempts there and that it's not just a one and done and you know, oh, they didn't respond. So I'm done with them. It's like, yeah, I mean, we got to nurture that. Right. And so that's really, really key. Um, And be clear on what is the financial expectation, right? Uh, I think that's really important and knowing how will the referrals come in if they're going to be a multiple of them, like, are they pre-screened qualified referrals, like my friends and family that need to buy something by the end of the month? Yeah, you'd probably be willing to do a higher referral split. And that's a lot more um, personable. They're like, hey, is a sign call. I never heard of them. Don't know who they are. Well, great. It's just knowing what are the expectations with that um, and, uh, and, and having that follow up, I think that's really, really uh, super key. Yeah, clear expectations of yeah. financial is imperative. I think that. so. so. And I yeah. think your expectation then on, on your, you know, what you feel at, at, as the end result, it has to be worthwhile for both parties, obviously, yep. right? Yep. So, yeah. um, and I think being clear can, can help that so much, so. Great, good. And, uh, and then your third uh, leveraged um, point. So my third, and again, I would say probably another, like, I would say a third of my business has come from this this year was um, I really did get connected with two mortgage brokers quite closely. One of them, I really did create a great bond with. Um, And I think what people don't realize, and and particularly these mortgage brokers were also new. um, And I do think that that's key because not that I, I'm sure there's, there's lots of amazing mortgage brokers I work with, but they have created relationships. Um, right. And, you know, often those referrals um, are, are being done already. And so to create somebody that's new, they may not at the beginning have, you know, a hundred leads they can send you, but it certainly builds up. And I think that that's been a, you know, a major thing for me this year as well. Great. And so, yeah. So, and then uh, I think what I was hearing is that you really s- specify and have, strong personal relationships instead of just throwing this wide net and mm-hmm. hoping to catch something you're dialed in and saying hey i want some really specific relationships yeah. that we can grow together like with kim with mm-hmm. these other uh referral agents and with vendors right so you almost have your own 
BNI started, where you refer business to each other and provide value to each other. And now just start to expand that a little bit more too, right? Um, I think it's you know, a slow process. Like I think it might yeah. be a little slower than, you know, some things I've done door knocking, I've done all the things, but this is one route for me that's worked and it's relationship building is, is like my number one priority in business. So whether that's with my clients or with the partners that I'm, you know, working with, it just, it does seem to work better. And that's taking them out for lunch and thanking them with gift cards and doing these things that does kind of keep you a little bit top of mind. Um, and that's, that's worked out really well for me. Yeah. And you know, I mean, you seem to enjoy the business a lot more that way, I think too, yeah. right. Where you just like, Hey, it's fun to go to work. Right. right. <laughs> we often say this, this business can be a little bit lonely because uh -huh. you are business for self and you know and sometimes you just have a bunch of bosses <laughs> all of your clients right and so it's nice to have those uh those relationships that uh, that you can leverage to help uh help grow your business so uh i think okay. great great insights and i appreciate you joining me today thank you for, so, for having me Shane. yes lovely and so if you're uh if you're an agent and you have questions or you want to pick uh, amanda's brain i'm sure she would love to have a conversation with you you could buy her lunch or coffee or wine i'm sure she'd appreciate that and uh, if any of uh, clients out there are looking for a lovely agent to help uh, with uh, with a move uh, i'm sure again she'd be uh, honored to uh, to chat and uh, and assist you with that. So, yes, thank you thanks so again, much. Amanda. Awesome. My pleasure. All right. Have a great day. We'll chat soon. Bye.